today what I'm teaching is very important and very dear to my heart. And for months, for years, I've been waiting for the day I will teach this. Amen. So I'm really privileged, really glad that today I'm teaching this. If you are here, this word is for you. Amen. If you are online, this word is for you. Amen. It's for you. The title of my message is How to Be a Successful Christian. How to be a successful Christian. You can be a Christian, but suffer. You can be a Christian. You can even be a pastor, and you will suffer. Amen. You can be a Christian, and all your life will be full of shame. Yes. You understand? Because being a Christian is a salvation, being saved. But life is more than salvation. It is, it, it is just that salvation is the most important. Because when you die, salvation will guarantee how your life will be. Amen. But apart from salvation, there are a lot of things. Which each one has its river. Each one has its path. That in order to be a successful Christian, you must be aware of it. Praise the Lord Jesus. And there is a clear way that the Bible has prescribed, amen, that one needs to do in order to become a successful what? Christian. There are five main things you must do. So today we are going to what? Look at it so that the struggle will cease. So that the struggle what? Cease. You see, when you become a Christian, there must be a change in your life. Other than that, you were not, you, you haven't become a Christian. And when I talk about change, I'm not only meaning money or job or sin or something. But for you, the individual, you always see a change in your life. I tell people that this thing I'm teaching, if you decide to obey it, within three months, you begin to sense peace. Within a year, you begin to see tangible changes. Within three years, you begin to see, in a certain sense, a total overround change in your life. If you would do it. It doesn't mean you won't have challenge. Because each day brings a challenge. Each season brings its challenge. So I'm not talking. In fact, if there are no challenges, there, there's no need to be successful. Please, you understand. But you will see that your life is successful. You will see that your life is better. You will see that now you are full of hope. You see, the Bible says, who can make straight what God has made crooked? You understand? So there, is, there, are, there are things that are how it is. You can't change it. The only thing you can do is understand it and work with it in your favor, in your case. Because each one of us, our case is different. Yes. Yes. The same thing that I will do that is good for me. You will do it will be bad for you. Yes. Because your case is different. Your temperament is different. Your background is different. Your experience is different. It's like allergy. The food that I will eat and I'm fine, you will eat and whew, you'll be in trouble. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we are going to look at how to become a successful Christian. One of the things that breaks my heart is when I see a Christian or someone who loves God, but is not successful. It breaks my heart. Because, see, the love of God doesn't mean you'll be successful. Yes. Yes. The love of God doesn't mean you will be successful, even though you should be successful. Yes. Because there are a lot of things you have to do to be successful. 
You understand? In, and in fact, there are things that we consider as, as successful, but it's not. And there are things that we don't consider as successful, but it is successful. Recently, I asked a brother. He said something to me. I said, I said, you are living, you are a poor man. He said, what do you mean? Because he has money, he has money, he has cars, he has buildings. I said, because the way you are living, that is how poor people live. Yeah, that is how poor people live. That's how horseless live. So you don't know, but you are poor. You know, because he's married. He's living in one country. The wife and the children are living in another country. And every day is a struggle to come and find. Imagine you are in Jamaica trying to discipline a child in United Kingdom. In the evening, you are sitting outside because you are lonely by yourself. Your wife is there, but lonely. Isn't this how poor people live? Because you are struggling, because of finances, one has to travel and leave one. Isn't it? No, I'm asking you. Isn't it a poor life? But what is a rich life in this context? You will stay with your partner and your children. What on earth should let you leave your partner and your children by themselves? Apart from necessity of lack, isn't it? Or sacrifice. So I'm saying this. See, there are things you think is success, but it's not success. But see, even this thing, it is God that will open your eyes. Then you see that this is what? Labor. It's not life. And this is what? Life. Please, do you get it? So today we are going to look at how to be a successful what? Christian. Amen. A successful Christian. Let the struggle cease. Amen. When I say a successful Christian, I say let the struggle cease. A successful Christian. A successful Christian. Good. Amen. Now, let's hit the scriptures. Now look at Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. So we are teaching on how to be a successful Christian. And this, I have a, I'm writing a book on this. It's going to be a small book. The message itself is small. Because the things of God, the message of God is very simple. All the other thing is to explain, is to explain, is to explain more. But the message is very simple. Amen. Okay. So let's read it. Amen. Amen. Mm. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. Mm -hmm. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them to practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Amen. Amen. So the Bible say, Jesus was talking about life. And he said, life, life is like building a house. It's like what? Building a house. So if you really want to understand life, always look at a house. Yes. I, thought, I think I've taught life as a house before. Look at house. And he said that anyone who is building from this, you are either building on the rock or what? On the sand. Okay. And he said, the one who built on the rock, yes. the storm will come. Yes. The flood will come. Yes. And what again? The rain will come, but it will still stand intact. But the one who built on the sand, the storm will come. The rain will come. The flood will come, and it will crumble. Now, life, it doesn't matter who you are. Storms will come. Storms will come. Flood will come. Rain will come. And each one of these things will 
have the power, the potential to change your life for the worse. But if this, but whether it will change your life or not, does not depend on prayer, does not depend on fasting, does not depend on prophesying, does not depend on anointing. I didn't say it. Does not depend on what? A spiritual gift. Does not depend whether you are uh, apostles of apostles, but it depends whether your life has been built on a rock or on the sun. I didn't say it's Jesus who said it. That is why there are anointed people with problems. That is why you hear somebody, I know, see, yesterday I had a great prophet of God I have to send her 30 pounds, 30 pounds, in order to go to hospital. She's so anointed. One time I was in the uh, service when I was being ordained. She was one of the people who poured oil on me. And in the service, when I was being ordained, when he was talking, he was speaking to a pastor. When he did this, the pastor went under the power. When he did this, wherever the hand went. But I see 40, 30 pound medicine was difficult for her. It doesn't mean she's not anointed. She's anointed. That's why I'm saying this. She served God for years. You see, but when the storm of sickness came, even the med money to go, you see, but it's not the anointing. Bible says Elijah or Elijah was sick on a sick bed. The sickness that killed him. He died by sickness. So. But before he died by sickness, he was healing people. Before he died by sickness, he has performed, even on the sick bed, he performed miracle. Yes. John the Baptist, they said there's no great prophet than him. Jesus said it. But his head was cut by a small girl. Yeah, it's a small girl that said, I want his head. Yeah, advised by a woman. So you see, whether the storms of life, because storms will come. If you think storms will come, you are a child. Oh, yes. Uh, that one I will tell you. Yeah, yeah. Or you are highly deluded. Yes. Jesus said, no, he didn't say when it comes. He said the rain cometh. Meaning it will come. The storm cometh. The flood cometh. Rain is blessing. Storm, flood are troubles. Come. What will make the difference? Whether you still be there, happy, moving on, or whether you will crash depend on how you've been building your life. And no, this, your life, is a house. And he said the secret to building on the rock, because he told you, if it's on the sand, it will crumble. If it is on the rock, it will stand. But he said the secret to building on the rock by obeying his word. Read that bit for me. Because he said those who build the rock, mm -hmm. those who build, those who obey his word are those who are building on the rock. Mm -hmm. Can you find it? Mm -hmm. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice. I want the other one, Sorry. please. Um, the one who hears my word and puts it into practice. And for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. So, and he said they are like the one yes, building on the rock. On so the it rock. means the Amen. way to build on the rock. Yes. Note, it's not to know the word of God. Exactly. I didn't say it. Amen. It's not to listen to the word of God, but it's to put, put the word of God into practice. practice. It's not to intend to obey the word, but it's to put it in practice. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. So note, if truly you practice the word of God, yes, you will pray. Yes, you will fast. Yes, you will ask for anointing. Yes, you ask for grace. But then you know that there is more, far more than this thing. You understand? So I'm not against anointing. I'm not against fasting. I'm not against prayer. I'm not. But then you will know that there's more to this. Amen. But all I have said, what I want you to pick up here is, as you are living your life, reality, you are building a house. Your life is a house. You are a house. And you are building your life. Because we are looking how to be a successful what? Christian. So you are building your life just like you are building a house. 
please, do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, now, what make a house successful? Or how are you able to build this house? Wait, we'll come back to this scripture. But the reason why we read this scripture is only to show you that your life is like building a house. Or your life represents a house. As you are living your life, you are building what? A house. Amen. Okay. Now, how or what are the most important things by which a house is built and maintained? Yes, because building is not good enough. It has to be maintained. Amen. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 5. So in other words, we are looking at how the main way that you will build your life, what it takes to build your life. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 5. Proverbs chapter 24, Eight. verse 3 to 5. Yeah. By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. The wise prevail through great power. Amen. Amen. So the Bible that said your life is building, as you live your life, you are building what? On the rock. says the way you build on this rock is by wisdom. It says it is by wisdom that a house yes. is built. Mm -hmm. And it is by knowledge that it is what? It is, are you talking to me? It, by knowledge what? By knowledge it's Why, Mike? Oh. By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through so by wisdom a house is built. built. But the fact that a house is built doesn't mean it is established. Many people do well one month go down, three months go down, one year. Yeah. Establishments is remaining. Yeah. So it is by knowledge that a house, your life yes. is what? Established. established. And by understanding, you are able to fill it with the good things. You are able yeah. to have the things you want. So this scripture mm -hmm. clearly is teaching us the way to have a good, successful life. And he said you need wisdom knowledge, understanding. You will need what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. If you want to build your life, if you want your life to be successful and maintain a successful life, you don't need money. You don't need husband. You don't need wife. You don't need sympathy. You need wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You need what? Wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Why? Because by wisdom, a house, which is your life, is built. By understanding, it is established. By what? Knowledge, it is filled with all the beautiful. Wisdom will teach you to get money. Knowledge will show you how to get money. Understanding will make you go for the best type of money. You understand? Wisdom will teach you what matters and what don't matter. Knowledge will show you what to do and what not to do. Understanding will make you not stress yourself on certain things. Wisdom will teach you that this man or woman you want, uh, who can be a blessing, can also be your downfall. So understanding will make you know that they don't sell it on the shelf. So if you don't have one, you are not a failure. And knowledge will teach you that you can live without it, even though you want it. Are, are you getting it? Okay. So you will need wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to have a stable life. Not prayer. Not fasting. <laughs> but I see wisdom will teach you that you have to pray because there are forces. Yes. Understanding will teach you that you will need to be fasting. Do you get the difference? But wisdom will teach you that there's more to fasting and prayer. Yeah. That there's something, for example, learning a skill. Yeah. It is wisdom that will teach you that they value this skill for this than this skill. Even though my, my desire is to do this work, but this work pay this. And I want such money, so I won't follow failing. I will follow skills so I can get this money. 
I want you to understand how by wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, life is built. Not by superstition. Not by begging. People don't respect beggars. People give what they don't value to beggars. Do you give, don't you give coins to beggars? Sometimes Jesus and Sarah campaign, when people come, they want a book, I say, make a donation. So we don't have coins. What they don't know, they are insulting us. We, they, we don't deserve paper. We don't deserve notes, coins. That's what it means. Several times, oh, I don't have coins on me. Meanwhile, we have bank machine, card machine there. <laughs> Some of you say, I don't have change. Hey, that's it. That you can't have, we just keep quiet. But the, the book is not worth, it's not, it's, not, it's not precious to you. So we just say, okay, then we just be there. We won't mind you. Yeah, we won't mind you. We are not selling the books. But you see, your ability or desire to donate tells us how important the book is for you. It's different from we have preached you, we have talked to you, and we think you need this book. Then we give you that. You need this book. Go and read it. Please, you understand. So it's by wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That is why Jesus said, or the Bible says, say, my people, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why he said he wept because of the ignorance of the people. So that's why if you hate knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you will suffer in this world. Yes. Your life, you will not have a successful Christian life. Because sometimes when wisdom comes, you see your foolishness. And if you are pride, you shy away, you reject, and you even hit the source of wisdom. But the point here is, to build a successful life, you need wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But there are so many types of wisdom. There are so many types of knowledge. Do you know the wisdom that gangsters operate with is different? One of the wisdom that you have as a gangster is they must fear you. And anybody must know when they cross you, they must know they will suffer, they will pay a heavy price. Because it's a world of envy, backbiting. So in that world of gangsterism, that is wisdom. I'm serious. The only thing that will stop people from taking advantage of you in that world is when they know you will come for them, they will never get away. But see, in the normal secular world, that is not wisdom. You see, the wisdom of a prostitute is the more men she sleep with in a day, the better for her. Because that means more money. But you see, when it comes to marriage, that is not wisdom. So I'm trying to say that there are types, kinds of wisdom. Every wisdom even changes with time. So what wisdom? What is the source of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you need to build your life or how you know which one is yours. You, you see where the challenge is. But let me show you this wisdom I'm talking about. The wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that by it you can have a successful Christian life. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Amen. Jeremiah Amen. chapter 3 verse 15, so that you be clear of the source. Because some of you, you want to have a good Christian or successful Christian life, but you are following the wisdom of the world. That's right. It contradicts it. You will struggle. The struggle will not cease. You will not be successful. Because there are types of wisdom. Yes. There, there's a certain wisdom that is even evil, wrong. Yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Please write, yeah, yeah. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. Amen. Amen. So God said he will give you shepherds, pastors after his own heart, who will lead you with what? Knowledge and understanding. So this wisdom, whenever I see knowledge and understanding, include wisdom. Because wisdom is just the wise use of knowledge. 
you understand. And understanding is understanding the knowledge, getting the why and the not of the knowledge. You understand? So it means I'm talking about the wisdom that comes from the heart of the Father. I'm talking about the knowledge that comes from God, the knowledge of God. I'm talking about the understanding. That is why I say the wisdom that comes from above. There's a scripture that says, pray to God, and he will give you the wisdom that comes from above, not the earthly wisdom. That's why there's a scripture that says, when you were in the world, you were of, you were, you were, you were of yourself some wise kind, but now you are no more what, of the world. The wisdom of this world is different. Even though the wisdom that comes from above, you can use it in this world. So, the only reason we read Jeremiah now is to tell you that this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you will need to build a successful Christian life so that the struggle will cease is the one that comes from God. The one that is from God. From God. From God. Not the one that TikTok teaches. Not the one that is on Facebook, but the one that comes from God. Okay, now look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. So, in general, to build life, you need wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In general, we just read it. It is by that one. That's why to have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, a couple of weeks I taught here, you must learn it. You must learn it. Other than that, you will know. Okay. Now, you've become a Christian. What will separate you from the world? What will make you a successful Christian? Please read it for us. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. Mm -hmm. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Amen. Amen. So the Bible, is sh this is showing at the source of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And he said the source of the wisdom and knowledge and understanding is the word of God. Hallelujah. He said, I have taught you decrees and law. We stand for the word of God. As the Lord commanded them, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering. To observe means to obey, to practice them carefully. For this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations. So, our source of wisdom is the word of God. For a Christian, if you want to build your life, which whether you are Christian, a Buddhist, a Hindu, you need knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Whoever you are. Because anyone you see doing something and is successful, knows something, understands something. Even the successful drug dealer, know something. Try to be a drug dealer in a week and see. Yeah. Yeah. Even the successful prostitute knows something. You know how many people have been destroyed? So in general, but for we Christians, the wisdom, the knowledge and understanding, the source is the word of God. Is the word of God. And he said it is by keeping them, not by knowing, not by listening, but by practicing it that is what will show the nations your success that is what will distinguish you from the others it's clearly they are my right look at the same Deuteronomy 32 46 to 47 amen amen so now we are looking so the source of wisdom is the word of God amen. when you take this to the look we read the first scripture we read in the Luke 6 the same thing was Jesus saying that if you put his word, which is the Bible, into practice, then you are building on a rock. Yes. So Amen. this is saying that to what we show our wisdom, knowledge, understanding is by practicing the degrees, Amen. the command. In other words, obeying the word of God. Uh -huh. Read it for us. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse mm -hmm. 46 to mm -hmm. 47. Mm -hmm. He said to them, 
Take to heart all the words I have solemnly declared to you this day, so that you may command your children to obey carefully all the words of this law. They are not just idle words for you. They are your life. By them you will live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So, so Amen. the words in the Bible, Hallelujah. everything in the Bible, you say, they are not idle words. I mean, it's not found words. It said, but they are our life. So if you want to have that life, life in abundance, is the words in the Bible. If you want to stop your, the struggles in your life, is the words in the Bible. If you want to have a successful Christian life, is the Bible. Because he says that they are not just words, but they are our very life. That by it, it will do what? We will live long, meaning prosperous. And before I said, I said we should what? Obey it. Are you getting it? Okay, we are summary it now. So what the Bible is saying, or all the scriptures we've read, what is saying that, listen, if you are going to build your life, have a stable life, an established life, a life that is at peace, and have all the good things in your life. What are some of the good things? Housing. No, um, cars is not necessarily a good thing. You know, there are people who are sitting on hundred thousands of pounds by the bicycle. But you must have a means of communication. The most important thing is, it suits your purpose. It's up to you. If you want a limousine, it's fine. There's nothing wrong. But you see, it's not the car. You understand? Uh -huh. It's not the car. It's the means of what? Communication. So, G so shelter. Everybody need a shelter. Everybody need a place to sleep. Everybody need good health. Everybody need peace. Everybody need peace. Everybody need a means of communication. You must be able to come and go. The convenient one for you. It doesn't matter whatever you choose. You understand? Everybody, you know, there are levels and there, but they are basic. Especially for United Kingdom, everybody must be able to wake up in the morning and buy a ticket and say, I'm going to what? Holidays, isn't it? Because you can go to France, 100 pounds and come back, isn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. So if you want to stop the struggle, if you want to have a successful life, the Bible says you will need to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And it says the source of that wisdom, knowledge, understanding is from the word from the Bible, because they are not idle. And they say, what will give you that house? What will bring the wisdom, knowledge, is when you put the words in the Bible into practice. Finish. Very simple. Is that simple? <laughs> is that simple? But we are struggling. When your friends see you, will they see that you are better off? Is your life successful? Are you at peace? Because, you see, it's one thing to know, and it's another thing to do what you know. Now, we know too much, but it's even a danger. Go to those of you that when you need things, you go to internet, even when you are sick. Is the internet you find the medicine instead of your doctor. Because anything you find on the internet, you find three opposing other things to whatever is saying yes. You find other three things saying no. So how do you practically? Because remember what we said. It said those who practice it. So the concern now is how do you practically engage and take the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of God and do it so that your life will be built on a rock. So that it will be successful despite the storm, the what, the flood and the rain. Because that one, it will come. It does come. Even your death day, it can come. And I said it will come. 
I'm able to, able to say it because the Bible says so. And I haven't lived long, but my few days, I can tell you, it does come. And you even come when you, that was the last thing on your mind. So by then, when it comes, the dar has been cast. It's too late. No, right now, see, it's raining. The place is flooding. What can you do about your building to prevent the flooding? It's too late. It is what you've been doing already. So how do you practically? That's what we are going to look at now. Session two. Because I want to know how practically. How what? Practically. You can do that. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. So how do you harvest, get the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 mm -hmm. verse 8. So now we are going to look at the five main things you must do if you want to have a successful life. Amen. If you want your Christian work to be a successful one. If you want the struggle to cease Amen. in your life. Yes. Okay. Amen. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. So Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God told us, us, he said, we should meditate on the word of God. I'm teaching now practically how to be successful. So he said, the first thing is to meditate on the word of God. And the second thing is to practice it, isn't it? You be careful to do everything means to practice it, to do it. Isn't it the same thing Jesus was saying? Isn't it the same thing Moses was saying? So the first thing is to meditate on the word of God so that you will be able to practice it. So that you become prosperous and successful. It's a chain reaction. There are steps. If you don't meditate on the word of God, believe me, you can never practice the word of God. And if you don't practice the word of God, you will not be successful and prosperous. As a Christian, you will struggle and, and, and. You will struggle. So, he gave us three steps. You can't jump one step. It's connected because it said, meditate on the Bible, the words, so that you what? Be, be careful to put, not careful, so it means take carefulness to put everything into practice so that you will become what? Prosperous and successful. And everything means what? Everything in the Bible. So the first thing is, how do you meditate on the word of God? So the first thing, the way you obey this Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the first thing is you read your Bible every day. Every day. I know it sounds simple, but many Christians don't read their Bible every day. You can never meditate on something you don't know. In order to meditate on the word, you have to read. Note, he, didn't, he said meditate on these words. On this words, he didn't say blank out your mind and fold your hand and this and say meditating. That is yoga, demonic background. He showed you things specific. He didn't say meditate on what you want so that you attract it. That's meta, metaphysics, which is occultic practice. He said meditate on this words, the word of God. And you can never meditate on the word of God until you read the word. So what does it mean? Every Christian, now if you want to have a successful life, the first thing you must read the Bible every day. Every day. And nothing can replace that. Nothing can substitute that. And you are not to meditate on the Bible. You are not reading the Bible to teach somebody. 
You are not reading the Bible to show God that I've read the Bible. You are reading the Bible to think through what you are reading in order for you to practice, in order for you to do. You are not reading to take a box. So if you are reading to take a box, it won't work. If you are reading, you have someone in mind to show the person you know, it won't work. If you are reading things that will bring you spiritual growth, it will just give you knowledge, but it won't work. Because meditate on the word so that you... So it means that when you are reading the Bible every morning, you are reading it for yourself. Because you want to prosper. You want the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding. You want to practice it. So in that one, you see that you can't read plenty. Yes. Because what you read... Meditate on means you think about it. So what does it mean to think about it? This thing that I've read, what does it mean in general? In my case, what, how does it apply to me in my case? Because apart from the general, every case is different. And how do I practically put this word in action? How do I obey this word? Then you always know. You will know immediately what you need to stop or what you need to start. Then you know that you have to begin to change priority or make a U-turn. So the word of God communicates this thing to you. You haven't meditated on it. You've not taken step one. Forget the next two steps. Uh, No, I'm serious. He said meditate on you. You see, I'm teaching you the first step. Listen, no amount of preaching can change you no amount of anointing with oil can change it until you yourself, you started reading the Bible for yourself to think through and to apply it. If you do so, the preaching will even mean much more to you. To, you, you do so, then the books will mean much more to you. But you, the original book, you don't pay attention to the one someone has written. You are just being religious. But if you should pay attention to the original book, the one someone has written will be like go to you because it's about the book. It's like you don't respect the father. Then what will you do with your sister? Even your mother can't and your sister. So if you don't read the Bible daily, you say I'm reading Christian books. It will mean nothing to you. So the first step I said it's simple. Someone should give me a scripture. Someone should give me a scripture. I don't like that one. Someone should give me a scripture. Eh? Lean on what? Should we use this one? What, what does it say? Henry, which one do you say? Uh, give me one. Hey, I want some other scripture. Content. Why did I even ask you? Content, yeah, amen. What? Which one? Contend, Lord, with those who contend with me. Huh. <laughs> Amanda, give me a scripture. Fine, this one, no matter what, I will listen to it. Say, hear my people to my Lord. Incline your words to the word. Words of my man. Do you have one? Okay. (laughs) So, okay, let's say I wake up in the morning and I take the Bible. I'm reading it. No, it has to be every morning. Of course, maybe there's that day that you will not. But if you are not, it is different from you don't read the Bible. It shouldn't be on and off. It won't work because you are living life daily. So you read it, what? Incline, what? Your ear, to what? To my word. So the scripture says, make me, what? Hear your word, so that I'll be able to, what? Hello? Uh-huh. No, I want the one you read. The same thing you read. Mm-hmm. So, this scripture we read, let's say you are reading. I want to demonstrate the number one practically. It said, oh, my people, 
give what? Ear to my what? To the Lord. Incline to what? Your ears to what? My word. So if this scripture say, oh, my people, oh, Christians, listen to my word. Pay attention to my word. So what does, if you, this is what you are reading, what does this scripture mean? In general, this scripture is telling Christians to pay attention to the word of God. What does it mean to pay attention to the word of God? Meaning, to listen, meaning to obey, isn't it? When we say you are not paying attention, to consider. So how does it apply to me? So this scripture is telling me that I must really pay attention to the word of God. Am I really paying attention to the word of God? Is that meditating? Yeah, I am. Oh, no. That is when the Holy Spirit can prompt you. Yesterday, that sister or pastor quote the scripture to you. You don't know. Then your mind, hey, I have to pay attention. You've made up your mind that you won't obey that scripture, but because you were meditating, the Holy Spirit was able to whisper. Now you decide to obey that scripture, and you'll be surprised the difference it will make for you. So now you decide that from now, I will pay attention to the word of God. What the word of God will say or is saying, either I read it or I hear it being preached, is what I will put my mind on, not what people are saying. So from now, I'm going to practice that. I'm going to practice that. So you see, it's just a chapter, but to meditate it could take you five or ten minutes. And if you don't go through this process, what you've read is good you've read, but it means nothing. Yes, because the reading is to practice it. The meditation is to what? Practice it. Do you know Satan knows the word? But he won't have the blessing of God. Do you know the number of witches, even Muslims that come to compete, challenge me on the scriptures by quoting scriptures? So knowing the word, it's okay, but it's nothing. In fact, there's an aspect of um, satanism that they teach you the word. That they give you a demon, a particular demon, I don't want to call the name, to help you to twist the word, to confuse Christians. I've come across many. Several times I've had dreams and visions that people who have come like that, I've seen them snake and crash in their head. One time, Brother Chris came to Jesus' dancer campaign. And when he came, one of such people came. If you know Brother Chris, you know how he's yeah. quiet, like everything should be cool, or no need to argue. So when these people come, they've come to confuse me. They've come so in the spirit. You see, that's the highest level of warfare because just a word can twist me. When Satan met Jesus, 40 days of fasting and prayer, what did they use? No, what did they use? The word. Satan quoted the word. Jesus also. Adam and Eve could see God. They hear God. What did Satan use to get them? The word. The same word of God. He twisted it. So it's not a So the guy was saying, I was giving it to the guy. I was giving it. He, he would say, I say, show me the scripture. It's not in the Bible. But the way he's dressed, the way you go about it, you think it's in the Bible. Some, he would twist it. I will say, no. The Bible, that scripture didn't say that. I said, bah, bah, bah. and but that brother Chris tried to come me. I said, please, please, I'm working. Don't do that. <laughs> because what he doesn't know is the spiritual realm. So he was there after he go. I realized, you know, he's a quiet man. He bought us Costa because he came to visit and he left. The next day, he called me. And he said when he, he, he slept, he had a dream. And said so when he had the dream, there was something like a ball around me. You can see through. And whatever, he saw the man when we were arguing in the dream. And whatever the man says, like a serpent that spits venom. But it, it falls on that round thing and it bounces back. So you think they are just words. But they are not worse. So I said, you see why I was serious? It's not just worse. So he said, you have to think of it. So uh, how do you meditate? What does it mean? How, what does it mean in my case? Because now when I read the Bible, and the Bible, a scripture says, pray without ceasing. What that scripture means is what? Pray without ceasing. But in my case, what does it mean? In your case, what does it mean? I don't know your case. But in my case, it's pray without ceasing means don't stop praying. Because I always pray. Amen. But in your case, it could be start praying. 
Because you don't pray. You see, so the same scripture, it has the meaning. But in my case, what does it mean? In your case, what does it mean? It's like a house. When we say the house must have a temperature of 24 degrees to be cool. In your house, what does that mean? In your house, it could be you have to increase the heating. In someone's house, it will mean you have to reduce the heating. So to you ask yourself, how does this apply to me? And what do I have to do to be practicing? Not the word practicing, ongoing this word. You have not meditate. And that is the step one. You haven't. You haven't. You are joking. It hasn't seeking to affect you. You not even remember it to do it. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm teaching about if you want to have a successful Christian life. As I said, you can be a Christian and be poor. You can be a Christian, and I'm telling you. You can even be a Christian and die of death. You shouldn't. Sickness, you shouldn't. Because for the lack of knowledge, my people perish. If you read the Bible every day, God will begin to speak to you. Believe me. The length doesn't matter. It is the everydayness, the constantness that matters. It sounds simple, but many Christians don't read the Bible. Many, when you live here and you go, that's the end. That's why you are not changing. That's why you're changing to a limit. Because you have nothing in your head. Nothing is challenging you. You see, I'm coming to the second point. But you see, without the first point, the second point is not that much effective. The effectiveness of the second point is dependent on the first point of you reading. You see, if you begin to read the Bible every day, you will value what is in the Bible. Then you value the second point I'm going to make. As I said, you are reading it for yourself. It's your life. Oh. It's your life. Because the storm, it will come. It, and it, it's not, it doesn't come one off. Yes. Yeah. Then the second thing is to obey the teachings of your pastor. Obey the teachings. Note, I didn't say obey the teachings of pastors. I mean obey the teaching of your pastor. Jeremiah. We've read about Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. So the first thing is to read your Bible. It's okay. <laughs> Amen. Jer the first thing is what? Read your Bible. Pray. Leslie, you'll come back to that. <laughs> uh-huh. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. Amen. So he said he will give you shepherd. God was talking. Shepherd means pastors of his heart that will lead you, feed you with what? The knowledge and the understanding. Whenever you see the word pastor means the person speak nothing but the word of God. Because the Bible says the one who teaches must speak the very words of God. If the person is not speaking the word of God, he's not a pastor. Because we have lectures. We have... Don't, your, don't you have... Your children, don't they have teachers? Are they also not speaking? So what makes a pastor is speaks the word of God. So to feed you with knowledge and understanding is to feed you with the knowledge and understanding of the word that you need in to build your life. So the pastor is the only official human being on earth that God has chosen to feed his people with knowledge and understanding. And that pastor, it is God. Say, I'll give you pastors according to my heart. So God gives everybody a pastor. He doesn't give all of us one pastor. Get this. Get this. And it is not the anointing of the pastor, even though the anointing is important. It is not the prophetic or the prophecy of the pastor. But it is the knowledge and understanding of the pastor that will make you prosper of the word. But that knowledge and understanding, of course, you will see that 
wisdom or understanding will teach you of the prophetic truth. Please, you understand. So, to feed you, and say, according to his heart. And that is, your, that is why the preaching of your pastor, because how do your pastor feed, how do pastors feed? Preach, how do they lead? Preach the word. Preach the word. If you are a member of a church, God knows you are a church. God knows this is your pastor. If God wants to speak to you, he always give word to your pastor to give him. And I'm not talking about prophecy. I'm not talking about word of knowledge, word of wisdom. That doesn't come often. You can't live on that. There's only one thing we have to live on. Every word of God. So the pastor will come preaching without himself knowing nothing. Because God has asked him. Or even as the pastor is preaching, he will just drift without knowing. But God is speaking to you. Your pastor is the source. And no pastor can replace that. Because you see, what God is telling you is totally different from what God is telling someone in Nigeria. Because the Nigeria situation or problem will be totally different from here. You see, the pastor in Nigeria, God would let the pastor in Nigeria tell the Nigerians, for example, that everyone who is working should have a business because one work will not be enough. That is true. In Nigeria, but in United Kingdom, is it true? It's not true. Try obeying that here. The pastor in Jamaica will say, you know what? Just start. Just buy a land. Just start building. Before you know it, you have your house. Just build room by room, which is wisdom. Is that same thing United taking not good? I chose it because it's clear you can see. But there's a lot of things. And that, that if many people will be in trouble. I'm not against online. We are online. Our same everything's there. But that shouldn't be the main source of your wisdom. That is the source. So listen to the preaching of your pastor. It is through the preaching of your pastor, then God will make you understand the word that you've been reading. It is through the preaching of the last pastor. Your pastor don't even know. He will ask many a time, finish preaching, then people say, I understand what I was reading. I was confused. God will bring what you were reading, will give more insight without the pastor knowing. Because God is a spirit. So you must listen to the preaching of your pastor than anyone's preaching. Because whatever you listen more affects you. That's why somebody can be in the church, even in the higher rank, but will not prosper. Come in, listening to someone in Antarctica. <laughs> saying wearing jacket. And you have come wearing jacket. Meanwhile, we are in where? South Pole. We are wearing singlets. You don't fit in. Meanwhile, we are saying wear singlet. Wearing jacket is not wrong. Wearing singlet is not wrong. But here, we don't need jacket. But you see, because you are listening, you become strange. And why, as I said, because your pastor is the one who will feed you what? The word. So obey the teaching of your pastor. Obey. How do you obey? To obey the teaching of your pastor. The first thing is to listen to your pastor's what? Teaching. The preaching that your pastor what? Preaches. When you listen, make notes. Now, I'm not saying copy or write down the entire sermon. If you do that, listen, you are being religious. Make notes. You won't need to make notes all the time. But you must always be ready to make note. Because your pastor might say something. It will cut you like a sword. It is for you. You have to note it, go and read it, and meditate on it. Because that thing as you are sitting, can even make your mind drift. You have to note it so that you meditate on it, so that you practice. Your pastor can say something you will not understand. You have to make note of it when you go find out from the scriptures or when you go call your pastor to explain it to you because it takes understanding. Anything you do understand, you won't do it. You will fail or you will destroy yourself. I could say, listen, 
You, you, you don't entangle yourself if you're a pastor by getting mortgage because it will bring money issues. It will force you. And maybe you're a member. You think it's you. And you say, you will be thinking, but if I don't get mortgage, how will I own, get my property? But I see, if you are confused, you write here and say, but pastor, I said we shouldn't get mortgage. I said, oh, no, no. I said, if you're a pastor, so it doesn't apply for me uh, to members because a pastor shouldn't entangle himself. You shouldn't put yourself that money will lead you and control you. Do, do you get it? Yeah. I'm just giving an example. Yeah. Yeah. So the note, the note is so that you can check it. You can meditate on it. So that you can perhaps ask that clarity. So the note is not writing down the same. If I, if I write it, you, you are not listening. Yeah, right. Right. But you must always. So if you don't make note at all, eh, it's questionable. <laughs> it is. Believe me, because it means when you live here, that's the end. You didn't get to meditate. There's always something. There's always something. Because without the meditation, you won't put it into practice. Without the thinking, what is meditation? What does it mean? In my case, what does it mean to me in my case? How do I practically do it? In other words, how do I practice this? You ask yourself. Then you see that, listen, the only reason why I'm with this man is because of the 200 pounds he gives me. And that is affecting me. Is it worth it? Okay, let me grab that job and stop this man and I'll get the 200. You see, you are thinking how practically in your case. And it's the same. So when you are listening, it's to make note, to take note. But the pastor is preaching. Can you take note in your mind? You try to remember it and you lose all the things. So you have to write it down. It won't happen often, but it should happen. Sometimes I see people leave their notes here and I laugh. I wonder, what were they taking the note for? The note is lying there four weeks. It's not religious purpose. So. It's for a practical use. It's for a purpose. So you must listen to your pastor's word. Preaching, you must make note. I explain why the note you understand? And you must also cross-check scriptures. If your pastor don't show you, if it doesn't sit well, cross-check it. So that's when the note come in. I see Brother James always making notes. He uses his phone. He take picture of the scripture. I say, that's right. It has hit him. I I'm serious. So that's the second thing. If you yourself don't read the Bible, the second thing will mean nothing to you. If you yourself read the Bible, the second thing, you will even enjoy it more. And after every preaching, now it is easy. Listen to your pastor, that same message again. I bet you, you will hear new things that you didn't hear, even though you were there. Each time that you listen, you will hear new things. Believe me. Because you see, the word is deep. If it's to sink in your because this is the source of the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. The knowledge, what? The understanding. Amen. Do you know, do you want the third point? You want the third point? The third point is, before I go to the third point, Okay, the third point is pray every day. Pray every day. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. I'm teaching you how to be a successful what? Christian. Amen. So that the struggles will cease. Yes. If you read the Bible, you'll be surprised. Maybe you think your problem is you don't have money. Yes. But you'll be surprised as you read the Bible, God will show you that your problem for lack is because you are lazy. Because all those things are in the Bible. You'll be surprised that your problem because you... you you mismanage money. So once you read it and you come and the pastor is teaching, 
about mismanagement or budgeting, you see that you even appreciate the teaching. You will not be offended. Because as the Bible made you know that you are mismanaging money and that is the cause of your lack, as you are thinking, so how do I go about manage? And you come and the pastor is teaching on budgeting. Then you see, you say, God, I thank you. He has answered my prayer. Yeah. But if not, when you come, you even look down on it. And you go and you are still in trouble. God, the Bible talks about all things. Why is that only you? Anywhere you go, you have problem with people. If I try, the pastor tried to tell you. That, listen, this is the problem. If you, hey, you even stop the church. But the Bible will tell you that because you are pride. Yeah, you are proud. That's why you easily, one side, one of the things proud do is you easily get offended. You become oversensitive. And nobody can walk around you with you. Because of you, I should tiptoe. My knee will hurt. So I'll move back so I can walk. Because I'm afraid. You'll be offended. But I see, even because the number of things we are to preach, if, for example, preaching this now, maybe I'll not preach it for another two years. So if somebody wants to know this, how will you know from the pastor? But if you are reading your unique case, God has a way, the Holy Spirit has a way, that he will lead you to those scriptures. He's the worker, he has a way. But till you do that, he can't. He can't. The third thing is to pray every day. And I mean everyday prayer. Of course, there's that day or for whatever reason you couldn't pray. But it doesn't mean you don't pray. You understand? Read it for us, please. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Yeah. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So it said, do not be anxious about what? anything, but in every situation. Other versions say, in everything, by prayer and supplication. So the Bible is saying that in every situation, in everything, pray. Every day you wake up, you are doing a thing. You are about a thing. So you are to pray. You are to pray. Look at First Thessalonians chapter five, verse seventeen. Mm. Yes, five seventeen. Five seventeen, please. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse seventeen. Mm-hmm. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. It's a command. Amen. Pray without stopping. So the third thing, you wake up in the morning. You read your scripture. You read your Bible. You meditate on it. You know what it means. After you meditate, if you had notes from your pastor's preaching, you go through it, you add it to your meditation, then now you pray. And when I say prayer, what means by prayer is you alone by yourself, you pray to God, God in the name. I'm not talking about going online and joining online prayer. That is not prayers. I will explain. Yes. Your personal prayer is what I mean. Your online prayers, your church service prayers will not be effective without your personal prayer. In fact, you can pray online prayers, you can especially online prayers, and you still be in need, you struggle, you'll be surprised, all those prayers, even though they are good, powerful, in your case, that is not what you need. That is not what applies to you. Because he's leading his church. Imagine they are praying that there will be jobs in Nigeria or or the Caribbean. Do we need that prayer here? Your own is you are praying that the jobs you have applied, because there are plenty of jobs, will what? Be given to you. And you are praying, let there be jobs. Let there be jobs. There are already jobs here. It, it, there's nothing wrong, but I want you to understand. Many are not praying because they wake up, they join online prayer. That is not prayer. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Is it 4? 6 verse 6. Jesus said, you go into your closet and close it, and you pray to your Father in heaven. He was talking about personal, individual prayer, you and God. That is when you pray about your needs, your challenges, your difficulties. You have fornication, you are breaking. 
Your problem all is fornication. And all your prayer is, I bind Satan. All your prayer, let me be successful. Me, what? That is not your problem. That is not your challenge. Instead of to bow and say, help me with this fornication. You know I am weak, Lord. Give me a man. When I get a man, you know I will stop. Let him marry me. That is what you must be praying. You are online. So I'm talking about Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. That is the prayer I mean every day. Read it for us. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. When you pray, Amen. go into your room, close the door and mean private mm. and talk to your father. So it means you and God. Hallelujah. That's right. I'm not against online prayer. I'm not saying it is bad, but I'm not talking about that prayer. The prayer that will make you successful Christian, that will make you the struggle stop, is your personal prayer to God about your needs. Father, you know, fasting is my challenge. You know, help me, Holy Spirit. You let me be able to fast. That is your personal need. The word that you read, the word that I say, pay tight. You are not able to pay tight. And you read Malachi and say you are stealing from God. You've been convicted. You go into prayer, Father, your word says so. Help me to pay that. Let me be truthful. You see, personal, then he will, God bless you. Then he will answer you. Does that mean that the day you don't give me money, I'm not preaching well? <laughs> <laughs> it hits you. Listen, then he will answer. Other than that, you are play, praying vain prayers. Vain prayers doesn't mean bad prayers. But it means prayers that it's not relevant to your need. It's vain. So nothing can replace that prayer. In fact, in fact, if you pray every day, the online prayer will be effective because it will be additional. The prayer you wake up at dawn and join people. Listen, I'm a pastor. I mean, I have never join anyone online to pray. And I'm not saying it as a boost, but I am always pressed with immediate things to pray. How can I leave what is pressing me to pray for what is not pressing me? I'm not against Bishop that lead online prayers. I'm not against, but I'm talking about you having a successful life. You've prayed, yeah, the whole week we've been praying. You've been waking up 5 a.m. You pray to serve, it's true. It's true, you've been praying. But I see, what you need now is a job. You've never asked about a job. Have you prayed? Why will you be successful? Meanwhile, there is what you ask is what will be given. We are in dangerous time. You see why it takes knowledge, wisdom, and understand. If you understand why we pray, a lot of prayers, you won't bother yourself. Not because it's not good. Because you know that in your case, for your purpose, you don't need it. So the prayers I'm talking about, you going to your closet, closing the door, and praying to God. Yes. Yes. So that is what? The 13. Yes. And your church prayers. If you pray daily, you will not joke with your church prayers. Because anything with God, you won't get it. But as you do it, the more you do it, the more you understand, the more you see the power in it. So if you pray daily, you will see that your church, and I mean your church, I'm not talking about other churches, just as your pastor, your church prayers will be important to you. Then that is what will make, will add up, will add up to it. It will make your personal prayer effective. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. It will make your... So, so pray every day by yourself. Ask Pastor Dress. Me and her, we hardly pray together. You can ask her. You ask her. Hardly. Unless special occasions. Because, listen, I've wake up in the morning. I'm going into the closet, me and my father. One on one. One on one. It doesn't mean I don't pray with people. Every Monday, we are here intercessors. We pray. So I meet people to pray. But my daily prayer 
It's me and him. One. Lord, heal my heart. Lord, this person has offended me. But let me not be offended. Help me. You see, my problems, my need, my challenge, me, my life. Lord, Christmas is coming. Money, money. You know, I have to buy gifts. Money. You see, my people, you don't have that challenge. I should come and join her. Maybe she's, her concern is her wig. <laughs> I should come and join her. Pray about wig. Am I wearing wig? Do I wear wig? <laughs> I'm giving an example. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing will replace it. So third way is praying for yourself and also being involved in your church prayer. If you meet these two, if you like, sit online 25 hours and pray your prayers. But without these two, that one is fake. It will mark it. I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. So I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. I've never joined Bishop Dark to pray, flow prayer meeting to pray. I've never done that. It does, you all know how our Bishop Dark. Their prayers, they pray is very relevant to their needs. But me, me, I need this place to be filled. He's praying. God, open doors in Madagascar for us. Let's send pastors to Madagascar. Open doors. I don't need open doors. I need this room to be filled. I need this room to be filled. I'm not, I'm not filled and filled. Why am I saying, God, send, let me send someone to Madagascar. His prayer is not wrong. But that's not what I need. And that is not my church. Your church one, because you're a member of the church, God has a way. The prayers there will suit you. Like the Friday. The, because when you are coming, God knows you are coming. He knows the work. The prayer he gives to us. So read it for us, please. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Mm -hmm. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. So Amen. the church prays. No, the Hallelujah. church was. So I'm not saying church prayer is wrong. But I'm saying that's the second. The first one is you and God. In fact, whether you truly pray church prayer, whether your church prayer will be effective, depends on your prayer with God. It's not a substitute. That one make a difference. Remember, Peter and Stephen, they were called. Peter and Stephen, they were praying. But the church was also praying for them. It was the church prayers that made the difference. But it is because Peter was also praying. So prayer yourself, you and God, and church prayer meetings. Nothing can replace. No other prayer service can replace your church. Believe me. I'm telling the truth. Sometimes I see people living here and the radio station, everything they are listening to is in Ghana. And I laugh. So you see that even though they are living in London, their life is like they are living in Ghana. They are in London, you know, but they have all Ghana problems. Here you see them like slaves. How possible? Because everything they are listening to is Ghana. The fourth thing, you have to have a church and a pastor. As we are going, you see that everything is leading to the other. So even though we started from the top, you see, you, okay, we'll come back. You see that you have to have a pastor. You have to have what? A pastor. Why do you have to have a pastor? Let's read scripture, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. So if you want to have a, sorry, not a pastor, sorry. The fourth point is you have to have a church and a pastor. Don't separate it, it's together. Because without a pastor, there wouldn't be a church. And with a church, there would be a pastor. The two is not separable. It's not separable. The only importance of a pastor is the church. And the only reason one is a pastor is the church. And the church cannot function without a pastor. So you need a church and a pastor. It is the pastor of your church who becomes your pastor. Do you get it? You need a church and a pastor. That's the fourth thing. If you want to have a successful Christian life, the church you go to will make you or break you. 
Church, we are not meant to choose church because of feeling or because of nice worship or the size. All those things are good. We, are, we want those things. But that is not why. I've seen people in churches, sometimes they come to me, can you do this? I say, your pastor. And they say they can't. And I'm wondering, what's the point? You have a pastor, he can't name your child. You need me to name your child. What's the point? You have a pastor, you can't go to counsel with your pastor. What's the point? People are not getting. That's why we have problems. The church is not a society. It's a body. It's not a feel good. It's not an association. So, read it for us. Let's read the scriptures, then I'll explain. The fourth thing you need is to have what? A church. Amen. Okay. And a pastor. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. Mm -hmm. He he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet. And Amen. Amen. The reason why we started from the top is just for you to know that he's talking about Christ. That's the reason. But this is what the point I want. Uh, Amen. Mm -hmm. And appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, when I which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything so in every way. So the Bible says the church is the body of Christ. So the church is a body of Christ. You cannot be a Christian without being part of the body of Christ. So if you are a member of a church, then you become a body of Christ. In fact, read this scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 27 to 28. Amen. Please, you understand, the church is the body of what? Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 to 28. Mm -hmm. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So, and now I said, Amen. the church, which is the body of each one of us, is a, a part, part of, of it. it. So every member, some of us are here, some of us are the veins, some of us are the Amen. island. So we are individual part of That's the body right. of Christ. So you cannot abide in Christ, belong in Christ, without being part of, of Christ, of which is what? The church. the church. That's why I said the church, the church is the pillar, pillar and foundation, foundation of truth. Hallelujah. Pillar and foundation is what hold everything of yes. a building. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. So it's not possible to remain a Christian and have a successful life. It's not possible without a church. If truly you're a Christian, your Christ will teach you that you have to be in the church. Because continue reading. You see that I say, Christ has appointed in the church. Yes. Read it for us. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing. So God has Amen. appointed these things Hallelujah. in the church. Pastors, apostles, prophets, it doesn't matter. It's yes, the same yes, thing. Yes, yes, Amen. The healing and deliverance is not mm -hmm. outside the church. Yes. It's not outside the church. It's in the in church. The church. Why? Because that is the body of Christ. So a church will have a pastor. Whether the pastor is an evangelist, apostle, teacher, or whatever, a pastor, a pastor is the shepherd of the people. So that's why I say a church and a pastor. Because we are individual members and he has appointed in the church pastors. So don't tell me we are all Christian. Yeah, we are all Christian, but some are pastors. We are all priesthood, but not all of us has been ordained and anointed. It set your pastor because he's the shepherd. He, he, that's what makes him the shepherd. So you need a church and a pastor. Many things, even your best friends can tell you. And you are doomed. If you don't have a pastor who tell you, yes, you are doomed. They can't tell you. Only your pastor can tell you. Only your pastor. Many things, many things. Nobody, believe me, is really concerned, burden, and they will not. Because people have their own luggages. It will be your pastor. And even if, if God is going to do with you, it's your pastor. Because he, he, he has appointed in the church pastors. So it means that why we appoint God, you know that you have to be a member of the church. 
and it says it's a body. So a member is one who belongs, one who goes, one who is part, not one who visits. Is any member of your body temporary? Then give me your ear. Let me take your ear away. Do you wake up today and your ear is not there? All the members of your body are there, permanent. And they are all doing something. They are involved. The ones you can see and the ones you can't see. The one that looks good and the one that don't look good. Because when you study the body of Christ, the Bible says some don't look good. But I say even them we have to protect, cover. You, you understand? So if God is going to work with you, deal with you, the source to you is the pastor and the church. What, what does Christ do? He nourishes his body. So if you are not part of the body, will you be nourished? He cleans his body. If you are not part of it, we clean it. What is Christ building? My church. He's building the life of his church. If you are not part of the church, will he build your life? And he, does, he didn't say build, he said church, which is his body. And where, what is the body? We are the individual members. So be there and think it's an option. You think the church needs you. Be there. That's why many are struggling. And they will struggle because you can't make straight what God has made crooked. There is an ordained way, the Bible says. Yes. You can't too. Why do you need a church and a pastor? Ezekiel 34. Chapter 7 to 9. The fourth thing, the reason. Because without a church and a pastor, it's not possible to have a successful life as a Christian. Most of the people you see, you think they are working. If they show you where they go. Do you know the number of people that have met that have visited Palm Readers? Yeah. Do you know the number of when we all go out tomorrow when you see people when you do you know where they have been? Hmm. You have no idea. No. Credit, there, there's a group of Palm Readers. They are about four. They work, they work seven days a week. Se- all day, seven days. That's full time. They've been there more than a year. Imagine the income. So imagine the customer base. Do you know the things they are connected to? The things they do? You think they are just there without anyone? No. Ah. Ah. Please read it for us. Why you need a shepherd, a church, and a pastor to have a successful Christian life? Hallelujah. All these things. Is the pastor who is preaching it? <laughs> is the pastor who is preaching it? Mm. Yeah. Ezekiel 34, mm. 7 to 9. 9. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd and so has been plundered and has become food for all the wild animals. And because my shepherds did not search for my flock, but cared for themselves rather than for my flock. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So it said, because my shepherd, my sheep lack a shepherd, they have become what? Flocks. For all wild animals, and they've been plundered. So he said, because his people, the Christians, don't have a pastor, they've been plundered. Plunder means what is yours? Your blessing, your peace has been taken away. And also, you have become food for demons. Do you know demons see us as food? Or you don't know? That's why, though, just as you, you, you have pets and things, so demons have animals as pets. So he said, they have become what? Food for all the wild animals. They, otherwise, they have become uh, food vessels for demons. The demons are able to what? Batter them in it because there's no shepherd. Because you see, the only person, the only person on this earth that can drive away the wild animal that is coming for the, uh, for the sheep is the shepherd. Yes. That's why David said, a bear came for one. I went against him. That's why David said, the other day a lion came and I went. He came for one of the sheep and I went against him in the name of the Lord. Amen. That's your mother able to cast out demons from you. What people cast out demons? What people break them? So he said, because they lack shepherd, pastor, they become food for wild animals. They become available for demons. Demons only bring catastrophe. Yeah. Yeah. And also, 
They've been plundered. Their marriages, their health, their peace has been taken away, given to others. Plunder means what is for you has been come, has been taken by force while you were you were weak and has been taken. Go on, someone is enjoying it. That's the word plunder. It's a it's a it's a warfare word. When you win, you plunder, you take. But without a shepherd, that's the state. That's why God is against them. Because his people were crying, but because they didn't have a shepherd. That's why Jesus' Bible says, when he looked upon the people, he was sad because they were like one without a shepherd. Because without a shepherd, even all the satanic, you see, they have a shepherd. Yeah? yeah? When you read the Bible, don't you hear prophet of Baal, prophet of this? They have. They have. In the Bible, shepherd means pastor. Oh, pastor. So without a pastor, a church and a pastor, you are available to anything. You read your Bible, pray everything, you will be plundered. You will become a food. You watch any Christian that say, I'm a Christian. I don't need church. I don't go to church. I beg you, watch their life. Watch their life. You watch their life. Because you cannot make straight what God has made crooked. Can a leper change his skin? Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Last thing. Last thing. So what's the first thing? So to do what? For yourself by meditating on it. What's the second thing? Obey what? Of your pastor. You know the reasons. And meditate on it too. What's the third thing? Note, I said the teaching, so the preaching of your... I didn't say the ways of your pastor. Uh, and what's the four, third thing? Pray every... That's the third thing. And what's the fourth thing? If the two go together. If your church cannot give you a pastor, no point. If the church, uh, you don't... Your pastor is not your pastor, no point. Then the final thing is you must allow the ministration of your pastor. You must allow your pastor to minister to you. What I mean by your pastor to minister to you is to serve you. Because sometimes you do all these things, but you will not allow your pastor to serve you. So you will still have problems. You come to church, you read your Bible, everything, but pastor don't need to know my problem. God knows it. You will be there. Yes. Because God has done it that, listen, it is true, the pastor. Moses, his job was, he sit in the morning. Moses, that Bible says, saw God to face. But his Bible says, sit in the morning and people will bring their cases. Then he shall judge, tell them. He saw God first, face to face, but he sit for them to come and tell their problems. He didn't say, they didn't say, God will tell him, be there. So you can have a pastor, but your pastor can minister to you. That's why people have pastors, but they go to other church for counseling. That's why people have pastors. Sometimes your case, we have to pour you on you. We have to lay hand on you. You are Mr. Big Shot. You, they don't have problem. When ministry means service. Because there's a, sometimes you need to be counseled, advice. Sometimes you need to be given a key. Sometimes you need to be spoken to such a way that no one has done for you to come to your senses. Yeah, yeah. And nobody can do that except your pastor. Sometimes somebody has to say, the two of you stop the rubbish and begin kissing right now. Stop the rubbish. That's what will save the marriage. But you don't tell anyone. That one is you. You will not allow your pastor to minister to you. Don't tell anyone my business. I don't want you to know my business. You are digging your grave because counseling would do what counseling would do. Bible says by many counseling, many counseling, many counseling, war is waged. So in time of trouble, it's not only prayer. It's not only, but the counseling matters. The administration matters. When I, when I say administration, it could be counseling, it could be advice, it could be instructions, it could be laying hand on you, it could be anointing, it could be different things. 
you must, you must allow. Last scripture, then we go on this point. Ezekiel 34, verse 1 to 4. Ezekiel 34, verse 1 to 4. Because when you do all this thing, there is an area or there might be a camp that the pastor must minister to. But you must allow yourself. Yes. Sometimes you think or you see your pastor the same, so he can't advise you. It's all right. It's all right. But just take note of the fish. Ezekiel, we are coming to read. Amen. 34, 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Mm -hmm. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Mm -hmm. Woe to you shepherds of Israel who only take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, nor healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. Okay, hold Amen. on there. So God was against the pastors. He said he was going to punish the pastors. He was really going to deal with the pastors. Why? Because he said the pastors have not strengthened the weak. Because he said the pastors have not healed the sick. Because he said the pastors have not gone to sort the lost. In other words, the pastors have not ministered to them. But we thought God is the healer. We thought God is the one who strengthens people. We thought God is the one who saves people. So how come God is going to punish the pastors? Why that? Because yes, it's God. But God does it by the pastor. And the pastor has said, God, do it with me. God has called, chosen, anointed the pastor that by the pastor, he will do it. So the pastor can stop, forbid, let God down by not playing his part. God never intended that the nation Israel in the Bible will be destroyed but by their disobedience. God never intended that it would take them 40 years, but they made it 40 years. So that's why he's blaming. So maybe the source of your healing is in the hand of the pastor. If God will not heal you, nothing will happen. But if God decides to heal, maybe hand must be laid on you. And you, they don't want hand to be laid on you because of your wig. <laughs> maybe all the answered prayer is the pastor giving you that key stop this and do that and you won't tell the pastor the problem, be there you are waiting to hear from God you've been waiting one year how come you haven't heard from God are you saying God is deaf, are you saying God is mute if you haven't heard it's a sign that you will hear because, you see, God is real. You shouldn't struggle to hear from God. I've never said, I've never prayed, God, let me hear from you. I've never done that. God speaks to me all the time. We went to wait in three days. I showed them my general, not of dreams, but of special encounters. One, one, the last I was even on holiday and he spoke to me. He even spoke to me about Dura. I told you. God speaks. If God wants to speak to you, are you saying if God wants to speak to you, you, you have to find out? Then you are saying God, you are, you are saying God is lacking skills of communication. So he wants to communicate something to you, but he struggles. So I want to hear from God. One lady said to me, uh, God said I should take one month off and pray so that he'll speak to me. He, uh, so uh, because he wants to tell me something. Hey. What she doesn't know, she's even sorting God. I know she thinks she's making it, but you are saying that God struggles to speak to you. That it would take God one month to tell you what he want, you say he wants to tell you. Because he's already spoken anyway. All the rest is there. What you don't know, the real time, the bumps and pumps. You see, so the healing, even the salvation, is dependent on the pastor. If God saves you, Without the pastor, you will not be saved. And I listen, Philip, Philip, Philip. God took him. Is it Philip? No, it's Philip. God took him to the Enoch to go and preach salvation and baptize him. The moment he finished, 
he moved him to another place. Why didn't God do it? Even a clear one, a clear one is, is uh, not so. Uh, I remember, don't say anything. A clear one is uh, the century. The century. The angel went to tell him that he should send for someone to go and call Peter. He gave, the angel gave him the p- address of everything where Peter would be found. And say, when Peter come, he will tell you. Then the Holy Spirit went to Peter and told Peter that some people are coming. But when they come, he should go. That's why he's showing the vision. Kill and eat. So when Peter followed them, they go. The message for them was salvation. And they, he prayed for them. They all received the Holy Spirit. They were all baptized. Why didn't the angel do it? Because salvation on earth is from God through Christ Jesus, but it has been put in place of men to communicate it. That's why I say, I'm against it because they do not look. They do not look. So even with that man, man's salvation is dependent on the pastor. How you work stronger, how you grow in the Lord is dependent on your pastor. The shepherd. So you must allow your pastor. One lady, I won't say it. I don't want to sound somewhere. Are you sure you want me to say? Then stand up. One lady said to me, "I am, I'm, 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 I'm shy to tell you." I said, "But when you go to the gynecologist, you don't say you are shy. You lie down. How, how are you shy to tell me this? It's pride." You are shy to tell me that you are in debt, so what's the way forward? But when you go to the gynecologist, kana- you lie down. That one, even you are not shy. So you see, it's pride. It's pride. All I'm saying is, you must enjoy the Christian life. Your life as a Christian must be an advantage to you. But it is important you make sure you have a successful life. And from God, if you want God to be part of your successful life, this is the five practical things you have to do. Read the word. God. If truly you read the word, you will become obedient to it. Pray. Listen, pray. Because prayer will help you. Your personal prayer. It will make you a better corporate prayer. Every day, nothing can replace this. Of course, listen to the teaching of your pastor. What's the third thing? Belong to, have a church and a pastor. Because you cannot meet God, do anything with God without having a church and what? A pastor. And the final thing is what? Allow your pastor to minister to you when the need arise. Many of the time, you have dreams. Instead of seeing an angel, God will show you your pastor. Yeah. Because he is your angel, your angelus, your messenger of God to you. You've heard the word of God. You know what it means to you. Just lift up your voice and pray regarding this word of God. Regarding this word of God. Pray, 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 pray that you'll be able to practice these five things. In the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the authority of the scriptures, I can bet you in the name of Jesus that if you decide to put these things in practice, practically, as I've taught now, within three months, you start sensing the peace and the joy. Within a year, you will see a difference. Between three years, you will see total different. You will see total different. You cannot do it for someone, yes, but you can do it for yourself. You can do it for yourself. You can do it for yourself. Ask for grace. Ask for grace. Ask for grace. Ask for grace. So when you come to church, you are coming it for your own self. When you pray, you are praying for your own self. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. When you decide to read the word to put in practice, you are doing it for yourself. If you get your pastor involved in your issue, you are doing it for your own self. Of course, 
it's not necessary, you don't bother. But if it's necessary, you do not allow anything, even the whispering of the enemy. That you have a successful Christian life, that the struggles will cease. The rain cometh. The storm cometh. The flood cometh. The difference will be how you are building your life. As for the coming will come. I will not lie to you. If I tell that I won't come, I'm a liar. And anyone who is at least the age of 30 years or who has had a boyfriend or girlfriend before will know that the rain cometh. The storm cometh. Yes. The flood cometh. But may you be prepared. Amen. May you end up building on a rock. Amen. And may your house stand. Amen. May you be able to read the word for yourself. May you be able to practice the word. Amen. Receive grace. Amen. May you be able to go down on your need. It's an issue of discipline. It's an issue of choice. It's not difficult. I say you don't have 10 minutes every morning or every evening. If you won't do it in the morning, you won't do it. It has to be in the morning. Yes, you will need to sacrifice. You will need to go through the pain, yes. Because change also comes with a pride. It comes with sacrifice. In something, in order to lose, you will need to gain. Sorry, in order to gain, you will need to lose. You will lose. Other than that, you can't gain. You want to gain nice body shape, you need to lose some weight. Meaning you have to sacrifice some food. And you have to suffer some training. You can't do anything about that if you want it. Sacrifice. Loosen. Suffering. Change of priority. If you want a change. Your priorities will change. You are never late for work. But you are always late for church. You are never late for hair appointment. It's not because you won't be late. It's priority. You are never late to have your coffee, but always late to pray. Always late to read your Bible, but never late to go on Facebook, TikTok. There is one. WhatsApp status. There is nothing wrong with it, but I'm trying to let you know it's not because it's priority. Not because it's difficult. But I see don't neglect what will really make the difference. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May you prosper. Amen. May you become a successful Christian. Amen. When you begin to read the Bible, you will know about money. Amen. You will know about children. Amen. You will know about attitude. You know about character. Amen. You will know things. The Bible has things. Amen. You know what really matters and what don't matter. You will know, you even understand the importance of education. It talks about everything. It said, they are your very life. It said, the words are not idle words, but your very life. So it talks anything and everything about life. If you are not reading, you wouldn't know. Go and prosper. As I have declared, Lord, may it be so. All who obey, all who put a test, may they see that. Three months, one year, three years. Even do unto them and for them exceedingly, abundantly than they can imagine. Go and prosper. I release you to prosper from anything holding you. Go and become a successful Christian. I break all hold on you. Stop you to be successful. Go. 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 Be successful. Enjoy the Christian life in the name of Jesus. We'll come for our communion. Amen. We have already received our offerings. If you were not here when we brought our offerings, as you come for the communion, you can bring your offering. Father in heaven, I thank you for this communion. I give you glory and I give you praise. I ask in the name of Jesus, among other things by this communion, may we be in Christ Jesus and may Christ Jesus be in us. Today, let everyone who have this communion 
including those online, let each one be sober in the spirit and high on obedience to your word. Let every busybodiness. Do you know the Bible talk against busybody? Because some of us we are too busybody. Doing things that doesn't matter. In things that, you know, let every busybodiness, every unnecessary activity die. May we see it. And may we be quickened to be involved in the activities that only matters. That only be fruitful. Help us, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. As you eat this today, healing will enter you. Grace will come upon you. You will be revived. You will be more disciplined. You will do that you need to do. You will break through. Above all things, above all things, above all things, I wish, I pray, I declare, that you prosper as your soul prospers. That you prosper as your soul prospers. That you prosper as your soul prospers in the name of Jesus. Let's come for our communion. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me White as snow, oh no, other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no. Found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Do you need help? Do you need help there? Okay. God loves you. Remember that. No matter how a father or a mother loves a child, it will take obedience of the child to experience the love. And it is only the child that can obey. The father, the mother can't obey for the child. The plans he has for you 
our plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope and not to harm you. If you not lean on your own understanding and rely on him, you will see his glory. You can bet with this bet. If you obey what I'm doing, read the word, apply it, and begin to do or not to do what to do. Three month time, you begin to sense the peace and the joy. A year, you will see a tangible growth. Three years, you will see real change. Believe me in the name of Jesus. I speak as a man of God. There is no other way. Ananda will go around in circle, 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 circle. Is that what you want? We break the cycle now. In the name of Jesus. Clap, clap. That was a good place to clap. Amen. And we shall prosper. Amen. We shall be successful Amen. in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's welcome Pastor Joyce with a clap offering. Father, we are praying again. Father, I thank you for the communion. By the communion, I declare that we are in Christ Jesus. And that Christ Jesus is in us. Therefore, by his stripe, we are healed. Therefore, we are partakers of his blessing. Therefore, we are more than conquerors. Therefore, we shall bear fruit, fruit in areas that we've never been. Father, I also bring before you the offerings and the tithes. I ask that may these offerings and tithes be pleasing and acceptable unto you. I ask that, Lord God Almighty, by this tithe and offerings, may your needs be met. May your battles be fought. May they be provisioned in this, your church. And I ask that by this tithe and offerings, Lord, bless them for giving. Bless them for giving. Today I stand on the tithe of the people and I rebook the devourer, the devourer of their finances, the devourer of their life. Anything that is troubling you, anything that has been fighting you, anything that is hindering you, any financial distress that you have, I declare it today as a devourer. And by your tithe, I rebook it now in the name of Jesus. It's rebook. Now receive the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding for your financial case to be financially sufficient, to come out now. Yes, I declare the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the favor, the grace, the opportunity that it would take for your finances to be better. I declare it as the open heavens of tight. May it open up over you. May it be on you. May it enter you. And may you walk in it. In the name of Jesus. Someone give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Wow, what a word. Please be seated in heavenly places. I forgot something important. You know, we have to pray for Amanda's birthday. Uh, it was the Tuesday I had to pray for her birthday, and I said today. Because the atmosphere Tuesday was, was different. So stretch off your hand and pray for her. How old are you now? 13 or 20? 21. <laughs> 21. You look 16. <laughs> Strap off your hand and pray for her. <laughs> pray for her. Pray for her. The latest 21 year old girl in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Those of you who want to be 21, you are not going to go to pension. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the life of Amanda. I thank you how far you have brought her. We say we are grateful. I thank you for the several deliverances, several blessings, several escapes, several provision. I thank you that you've surrounded her with loved one. I thank you for the plans that you have for her. Father, I thank you for adding another year. I join together with the church and we say, Lord, let Amanda's life be a sign and a wonder. Choose her 
as one of your miraculous symbol, as one of your signs and wonder. Transform her into your glorious place. Let her life be sweeter. Set all controversies about her. And in her mother's home, in her father's home, lift her up. 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 Let it be said of Amanda. Let it become of Amanda. That, that, that the pillar that the potters, that the laborers rejected has become the corner pillar. Let it be said of her. Let it be regarding her that where there is no hope, there is hope. And may all know and see that indeed is your hand. You will break through, Amanda. Amen. Your beginning is just your beginning. Amen. You will break through in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father in heaven, for an answered prayers. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Oh, God is good. Please be seated. Hallelujah. What a service. We give God the praise and we give God the glory. We thank God for an amazing day, amazing word once again we have received. I'm not going to add anything to the word. It's just the five points. It says, well, read your Bible, pray every day, obey the teachings of your pastor, and you must allow your pastor to minister to you. <laughs> if you don't understand it, if you don't know this song, come and see me. It's on a CD. I have it on MP3 play, uh, play, um, player. Please see me and I'll give you a copy of this song. Today, this is the new song we are singing. We're singing these five verses. So if you don't know it, come and see me. That means you didn't hear the word. It's simple five verses, five lines, and we're done. Give God a big clap. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Apostle, God bless you. Every day we are indeed being fed. And we don't even know. We pray that God should feed you. In a very special way, divinely, when you sleep, may you be fed in a divine way. And as we have learned from weeks ago that we have to be praying for you, indeed. Now we are even going to pray for you more. Because we want more. Who wants more? Yes. Then pray for your pastor. Amen. Let's thank God for apostles. We say, God, we thank you for apostles' life. Amen. So God willing, next week we are coming back here again to feed on more word. Next week is going to be jollof rice. If you have not eaten jollof rice before, come. Next week's word is jollof rice. Today, we went straight to France. It's been an amazing, we've had an amazing baguette. So if you don't know, today's word was baguette. Next week we are feeding on jollof rice and chicken with coleslaw. So come and you will be fed. It starts at 10 a.m. and then we finish at 12.30 p.m. And then on Tuesday, we're meeting back again to pray. The Bible says the house of God shall be called the house of what? Prayer. Yeah. So come, don't neglect your, your private prayers, as Apostle has said. We're coming together to pray, and that will complement our individual prayers. It starts at 6 p.m., and we finish at 8 p.m. Hallelujah. We're going Jesus' Dancer campaign. is on Thursday. Please remember to pray for us that souls will be won. Let's please be on our feet and share the grace. Amen. God is good. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen, 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 amen. Thy word is a light unto my feet and a light unto my path. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us 
all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.